In a good fireworks show, there is a lot of stuff going on and things you can take in with many of your senses. There are lights, flashes of color, there are fast and slow effects moving against the dark sky. You can hear the cracks of the breaks in the sky and the thumps of the large effects lifting out of their mortars. Sometimes you can feel the pressure of those concussions and if there are fireballs, you're gonna feel the heat. And in my opinion, you can make the show even better by synchronizing it all to music. For these pyro musicals and fireworks shows, video recordings of the shows may not capture all the excitement, but video does a decent job of capturing much of the colors, motion, and sound. Photos can be impressive too. However, still images don't always do the fireworks justice. It might be difficult to capture at one instance all that goes on in a fireworks show. But you have probably seen these long exposure photos. These are like magic as they produce an image that never really existed at one point in time. They actually let you see a range of time all at once. In a camera this is done by leaving the shutter open longer than usual. This is a long exposure photo I took at Western Winter Blast some years ago. And here what we see, we see the actual path of the lights and the colors. And how about these jellyfish pictures? I also took these down at Lake Havasu. They're Lake Havasu jellyfish. But what about this one? Well, guess what? This is not a long exposure photo. This was created from a video. Those that do a lot of video editing probably already know how to do this or something similar to it. But for the rest of us, I'm going to show you how to cheat the system and make these magical long exposure photos from the videos that you've taken of your shows. Here, we can turn the image on the left into this magical image on the right. I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro and the Echo Effect, other video editing software will have tools that will provide similar results. So for this video, I went back to our 2022 4th of July show we called Madness Collides and picked out this clip here that has a seven shot green slice going up with a few other items and a shell breaking behind it. Okay, we're gonna put that clip in a new Adobe Premiere Pro project so we can just focus on this clip and I'm going to further trim this clip down so that we can just focus on this short segment of the video that we want to add an echo effect on to make those magical photos. Yeah, here, something right about there. And then I can just delete the preceding and following segments that I don't want to play with. Okay, so now we have our short clip here. We see I have our seven shot meteor slice going up and a shell breaking behind it. Okay, I'm gonna take our clip and add some, uh, just a black video after it so we can put a number of these together. Um, I'm gonna put a text overlay on it. We'll mark one as original. And then we can just take a copy of it. And the follow on ones will list as echo and we'll keep track of the different echo settings. Okay, so we'll select that second clip and we'll go to our effects and select effects here. And then I've already put this in here, but we'll search for echo and under video effects in time, we get the effect echo and we'll take that there and we can just drag that over and put it onto our clip. Now it may take a little bit of time to process, but we'll see the image change to the default echo settings. Here it looks a little bit overexposed, but we can go and adjust that. So if we go and look for our parameters for the echo effect, there are a number of different adjustments that we can make. For example, if we change the echo time from 0 0.033 seconds to 0.25 seconds, we'll see a bigger gap in the repeated frames. Okay, I'll briefly describe the different echo effect parameters. 
Echo time is the time interval before the echoes, or the time between the frames that it copies. And a negative value will increase the echo from the previous frames, which is what we want in this case. Number of echoes is how many frames it will repeat and overlay. You can increase and decrease those number of, of echoes. The starting intensity is the opacity of the first echo, and I found that 75% looks good without getting too bright. Decay, that's the fall off of the intensity, so you can have previous frames get uh, more and more uh, opaque. And then there's the echo operator. There's a couple of different ways that it can blend or add or overlay the different images. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the default add just adds all the pixel values on top of each other from the different frames. Maximum takes only the brightest pixel values and overlays it. Fireworks are the bright pixel values on the different frames, so that's what we're after here. Minimum takes the darkest. It just gives you a very dark image, especially when dealing with fireworks. It kind of ignores the bright firework pixels. Um, screen is similar to add and then there's kind of an average but you'll find that for fireworks maximum copying those brightest pixel values on the image over and overlaying them on top of each other is what we want for this effect okay so we'll take one more copy of this clip here and duplicate it and we'll show the different adjustments we can make all right, so if we go to the effects parameters, and if we were to change the number of echoes to five, we'll get five overlays on top of the current image. And if we change that timing to say 0.1, we'll see them come closer together. There we go. So let's take a look at this. And here what we have is the current image and then following behind it is five overlays from the previous frames, spaced 0.1 second apart. As we increase the number of echoes or overlays, you may see some lag in the processing and playback of the videos. This here reminded me of the game Space Invaders. So we'll go ahead and take out these aliens first. All right, now back to our topic. Well, I already compiled a whole bunch of these video clips together. And for each one of these, I went and modified the echo effect parameters to show the differences that we can get. And I compiled it all into this echo MP4 video that we can play through. So everything's already rendered. All right, here is our original video. Okay, now we're going to show negative 0.01 echo time with 30 echoes or 30 overlays. We're going to leave the intensity and decay at 1 and using that echo operator of maximum. So this will actually play through that 3 second clip. And here is our image. Not quite what we're after, so let's try something else. Right here we're going to set the decay to 0.8. So we should see the follow on echo effects taper off in intensity which you can see here if we put them side by side. Now we're going to change the echo time to negative 0.033. The reason here is this video is at 30 frames per second, actually 29.97 frames per second, and that makes each frame about 0.033 seconds long. And I have a three second clip, so we're going to do 91 echoes, which should give us an overlay for every frame within this three second clip. So this still is not quite what we're after. So we're going to set the delay back to one so it doesn't taper off. We're also going to reduce the starting intensity to 0.75 because these keep overlaying on each other and it'll make it way too bright. So let's see how that turns out. Well, I think this turned out pretty well. I think we got the parameters dialed in for the echo effect. I hope you found this educational. You might find uh, some other tweaks that you can do to further improve some of your videos and to create these fake long exposure photos that are impressive. I'll leave you here with a couple other images that I created through this process from our 2023 July 4th show.